Hello, my amazing artists. Today, we are studying the artist James Rizzi, and we're gonna draw a cityscape inspired by him, like this. James Rizzi is well known for his cityscapes that are colorful and bright, and the buildings look like they have faces on them. He um, loved New York and was inspired by New York, so he likes to draw lots of buildings and maybe he's imagining what's going on with those buildings or what they're thinking. So today we're going to do our own drawing of a, a, a city and we're gonna talk about foreground and background. And we're going to use different uh, media. We're going to use crayons, uh, markers or um, washable markers. We're gonna use a Sharpie. And we're also going to use uh, watercolors if you have them. If not, you can use uh, washable markers, and I'm going to show you how to use them. All right, let's get started. Here are James Rizzi pictures. We're going to draw our buildings. First, we're going to draw buildings in the foreground or the front of the picture. Now, I'm just going to start with drawing vertical lines and horizontal lines. And I'm going to draw different sizes. So I might draw a horizontal line, a vertical line, and then I might draw a taller building. Look how it stops when it gets to the horizontal line. That gives the illusion that it's behind um, this box right here. And then I'm going to draw a line off. And I'm going to do that here. Okay, so once I have these buildings drawn, I am going to go ahead and give them tops. So I might draw different shapes like a rectangle, and I might draw a half circle, divide it so it looks kind of like it's windows. I might give it a triangle, and even tall rectangles off the side maybe it's behind so the curve is a little bit behind and how about two triangles and anytime it's going to go off the page i just keep going like it's still going now i'm going to draw background buildings now background buildings are going to be in the back of the picture and just like this building stopped when i got to something in front of it Background buildings are going to stop when I get to something in the back. So I'm going to draw something tall and a horizontal line and then another building and then see how I stop when I get to that line. Then I might have another building going down and this building is here. Maybe there's a building behind, it goes across, and then one more building right here. Okay, so once I've drawn my background buildings, I'm gonna give them tops as well. This is gonna look like the Empire State Building, and it's gonna have a spire on it. I might just give it double lines. Okay, now for the fun part, I'm going to draw faces on these buildings. Now when I draw faces, you can draw them however you want. I like to start with the eyes and you can draw the pupils, which are the inside of the eyes. These the white spots that I'm going to leave, these are the actual shiny part of the eye. And it just makes it look like um, it's alive. I'm going to add different kinds of faces however I want. You can get silly. You can, um, maybe you have a sleeping building. Noses and maybe he's going, oh, he's blowing. Or he could be yawning. Ooh, I want to draw yawning. Ooh, maybe one with an open mouth. So his eyes are close like he's happy but he's taking a big old yawn color that in you can do whatever you want for your faces 
have fun with them. Okay, so once I have faces on most of my buildings, I'm ready to start drawing windows. Now, windows come in all shapes and sizes, uh, but usually they're rectangular and they line up with each other. Now, windows can be um, just straight lines. We could do lines of windows. We could just do lines on the building. They have mullions that are on the inside. Um, here's some more line buildings and then some mullions. Just lots of different designs on your buildings to make them more interesting and add pattern and rhythm and detail. I'm also going to add doors at the bottom because how else are they going to get in the building? Now, I'm going to take my crayon. Now, my crayons, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to draw stars in the sky. So, I'm going to start with yellow first, and I'm going to kind of model it after Starry Nights, um, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. And remember, there's stars, and they have these orbs around them. So, I'm going to draw my stars with orbs around them. And then once I'm done with the yellow, I'm going to add some more uh, cool, I mean warm colors for the stars. So I'm gonna add some orange. And my orange are going to kind of radiate around my stars. Okay. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to use um, some washable markers and I'm going to start drawing the wind. And you see how I'm just kind of moving my, um, my hand and tapping my marker. That's going to give me kind of a wind vibe for my sky. I'm going to use several cool colors like purple and the purple might go around the, the stars that way and this way around that way and I'm going to try to fill up the night sky with these dashes and add different colors of blues and purples just so it starts to look like night. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some more crayon to the buildings. Now I'm gonna use yellow for the windows. I can use other colors and I'm just gonna color them um, pretty much full. I'm doing it quickly though. So there, I might leave a little bit of space in between. And that's gonna look cool because we're gonna go back and we're gonna paint over that and see how it looks. So anywhere where I think light's going to come out, I'm going to color it uh, with yellow or another um, color. My windows, my eyes could be windows, so maybe I color my some of my eyes yellow. Um, ooh, the, the spires could be blinking colors. And I'm going to choose other colors too, like maybe I have some orange light coming out of the doors and 
I might fill in some orange around the windows. And I can use some red. I'm just gonna draw the color the details of the buildings. I'm not going to color in the whole buildings because I'm gonna go back with paint and I don't want to have, um, I wanna have some space to paint. So I'm just getting the doors and windows, maybe the things coming up. Looks like I missed a window in here. Get this one right here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of bright green to go in here also. Oops, got my pen, my crayon, but it's still gonna work. Okay. Sometimes I like to add lines before I paint. Okay, so now I, that I've kind of colored in some details with the crayon, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape my water's pretty clear. I've used my brush had a little bit of stuff on it. And I'm gonna just paint clear water over my marker up in the sky. I move it gently, not too much water, just a little bit so it starts to pick up the paint, the marker color and paint move it around. Okay, now there are two ways I can do the buildings. I can do it where I color them all with marker on the sides and pick up the paint like I did the sky, or I can do um, paint. So I'm gonna do a little bit of both to show you. If I'm gonna do marker, I wanna color the sides only with marker heavy. This needs to be washable marker. And do you see how I'm also just coloring with the side of the marker? That way I get a lot of color to pick up. Or I can use wash, I can use watercolor. Now remember when I use watercolor, I have to wake up the watercolor so that it's ready to paint with the juice. I'm just gonna do a few colors. So first, if I was going to use the washable marker, I'm gonna get it wet, not too wet, and I'm gonna start to move the colors around. Now you're gonna notice with washable marker, some colors are really good about this, like the oranges and the blues and the dark green, but some colors, the lighter colors, don't move around as much. Then, if I am using watercolor, I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of the juice and I'm gonna to start to paint around my buildings. Now I'm gonna notice that wherever I, I um, paint it or I colored with water, with, I can't talk. I'm gonna notice that wherever I colored with crayon, it's not gonna stick. And that's okay, that's what I wanted. It's gonna add a little bit of interest and a little bit more going on. So I can color very carefully uh, with other colors. But it's gonna be next to wet things and so it can all bleed. I have to be careful not to get it too wet. So, and look, that's almost the same color. This is from my watercolor palette. Almost the same color as my marker. It's a nice turquoise aqua over my building. Now, when you draw, you're gonna to wanna to draw with pencil, and then you can go over it with Sharpie. I drew a Sharpie first so that you could see, um, you can see the changes, or you can see my lines. And I'm almost done with my James Rizzi painting slash drawing. I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna add just a little bit more colors where, um, because you know, if one color is interesting, two colors is more interesting. So I'm just gonna kind of layer my colors 
And then what's great about watercolor is they'll just kind of blend and um, really do some cool things. All right, I hope you all have fun with this project and I look forward to seeing your artwork.